our job as parents is to embarrass the hell out of her. Ah, staying warm with our outdoor wood boiler. Okay, make sure that when you're gonna grind your floor, as you can see all the dust in here, that you have a respirator and glasses and hearing protection and windows open. It's a mess. It's nasty. Clean the whole bus out and just clean it up. Well, look, I can't even really see how bad that is. It's real bad. So make sure you're well protected. This is the emptiest the bus has ever been. The air conditioner dangling over there from the side. The other one I should be okay with the floor. It only touches them at very few points. I can move things around when I need to. Overall, keep grinding. I'm using a wire wheel brush and it's cleaning all this rust up pretty slick. Making a lot of dust so we have the fans going, the windows open. With my seven inch giant wire wheel here. Rough enough to scuff this pretty good. And uh, boy, that's progress. I was going to name this bus Swiss Cheese. I don't know if you can tell why, but uh, geez, there's just a couple of holes in this thing. I have a little thing I'm going to do with that at the end. Once I paint this, I want to seal this floor first. Overall, it looks like, oh my God, look at all that rust. But that's really, it's all just surface rust, very minor stuff. This is what is underneath your plywood. So if you're thinking of leaving your bus floor in and just building over it, you can't. You have to rip this stuff up. Look at this mess under here. You just have to get rid of it. But now, we're going to paint this. We have a fresh canvas to go. We have, oh. Well, we are ready to paint our floor here. This is about the cleanest the bus is ever going to be. <sighs> wow, what a difference. So we wire brush this. Depending on what you're using, you may need to prep it first more so than what we did. We just had to wash it out. It's good to go. This stuff is good to bond right to it. I would use this or Pour 15, any paint over rust type product to seal this stuff up really good and go from there. Get it under your bus floor and well, shouldn't be too hard. Just have a roller and go to town. Well, would you look at this? Oh, wow. Okay, now we have a blank slate. A clean canvas. This is just beautiful to see. I tell you, everything has been hurry up and pull this off before the weather breaks because right now it is Halloween. And I had to hurry up and get the roof raised on so I could seal it up and enclose it so at least the wind is out of it. And then it was okay, well, before I hook up a wood stove and the diesel heater, which I have to drill holes in the floor, I really need to have the floor sanded and painted and insulated and plywooded. So I know exactly where I'm putting it. I mean, I could put it in and cheat it, but I kind of really just want to do this once. I don't want to have to grind the floor and make a huge giant mess once I have anything in the bus. So, ta-da, it had to happen today. And if it didn't happen today, I would have probably missed the winter because the temperatures drop enough that all of a sudden it's too cold to paint. I had to beat the right temperatures for this. So this is done. Now I can start insulating the floor and slowly start progressing. Now, well, this is where it's going to get fun. I need probably $700 to do the insulation for this floor. I don't have that right now, but I need to keep moving. So I'm going to buy a couple sheets, and that's going to enable me to glue. I already have the plywood for the whole bus. I have almost everything for the bus, except for the odds and ends and uh, insulation sheets of it. I'm buying two-inch foam. It's like $53 a sheet right now, so I need a whole bunch of that. I'm going to buy four or five to get started and then stagger the seams. I have a half a sheet already, so that'll give me the step up. And then I can get probably two sheets of plywood in here and then start. Okay, the diesel heater will go right here and I can mount that and make that. And that'll be in the floor while I slowly work my way back getting insulation. And as I progress, I'll, I'll slowly buy myself 32 square feet at a time every time I get a sheet of plywood added to it. That'll enable me to get some seats in there and get those mounted and make some, what I need to do for putting the couch together. Should work pretty well, at least, and save me a buck in, t in the meantime while I'm spending money everywhere else. So 
that's kind of one of the perks of this project. You dump a little bit of money into it, and then you have quite a bit of time to go. I uh, spent some money on the, the metal here and rivets, and then it was a good month of work to go through all that. But now, now I have to try to figure out what to do with all this junk. Because most all this is in the bus. Obviously, those are going back in. The kitchen sink's going to go back in. This, I want to make a new cabinet. I just had that to mount the sink and get that going. The stove is good. The stove top thing, this little handy stove, I don't know, I'd probably use that too here and there. Air conditioner pieces, this is going in. I have the pipe, I just picked that up to put that in. The inverter, the water tanks. Ah, one of the heaters, I'm going to put those in. So a lot of junk still has to go back in. Not what I want to deal with right now, but what a relief to get this done. That is so cool. Oh my god. I don't know if you can see how cold it is, but everything is all cold. <laughs> well, it's frosted. You can see it looks like the bus threw up out here. All this mess is to get organized and cleaned and put in here. In the meantime, I have to come in here and figure out what I'm going to do in here now. The other thing we need to deal with, the floors with the holes. Okay. A lot of people will do some weird stuff. Some people will glue pennies down. And then, you know, go ahead, that works. As long as you have a good layer of silicone or hot glue or something there so the penny doesn't react with the metal, dissimilar metals. Some people will leave it open, which is cool. If you get some water in here, you're gonna need a place to ever drain out. You seal this up too well, you're gonna be in trouble. My plan is to run really good tape. Now this is some awesome duct tape, if you will. And I'm just going to run strips of it over everything to cover these holes, right down the lines. That's why I wanted to paint this first, to seal all the edges of all these holes. Now, if I put the tape down and paint it over it, I'd still be left with a bunch of little edges that could be exposed to water. So when water gets up under there or ed from the tape, it would rust. Should be pretty well sealed now. So throwing the tape over top of this, that'll seal it for drafts. If water ever does flood this or get in this, God forbid, whatever, I'm sure there's going to be little holes here and there. It'll find its way through tiny little cracks and crevices to drain out. I don't expect this to seal 100%. I don't need it to seal 100%. If it seals 90%, that's good enough. That'll really make a difference for what I'm doing. So that's kind of that. And I need to get this going because it is cold. <laughs> My windshield's all iced. The whole bus is iced. And I want to put the heater in here so I can at least make some heat. So I will uh, fire up the propane heater because I want to warm the bus a little bit and this isn't going to stick too well to freezing cold metal. So we're kind of on that little bit of a timeline letting it warm up in the sun and um, I wanted to make this video to show you where we're at with what we're doing. Start taping and laying this out. Now, the next issue I have is the plywood. I have a whole bunch of Avantech plywood and I was planning on doing it four foot, four foot, four foot, eight foot across. However, when I bought the bus, the previous people laid it out the other way with the seam right down the center and split it off that way. So I'm kind of left with the pattern they went with due to how they cut the plywood. And well, because this plywood is not cheap by any means, and you're talking probably $500 worth of plywood, 400, something like that for this. So for that little bit of a difference, We'll cheat it and we'll make these seams work. We're going to use a better product than just some kind of thin little laminate on the top anyway. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal. So there's been a lot of talk about insulating buses and what you need to do and how to do this. Multiple different ways to do it because from the factory they come with this thin little bit of fiberglass insulation. Just enough to keep, it's really just sound deadening. It's not even insulation. This way it doesn't sound so bad when it's raining in here. I mean, kids are just to be outside in the outside temperatures for the most part. So driving to school and it's 30 degrees out, you don't really want the bus 60 degrees. They're all going to be sweating, taking their clothes off. See, so they're not meant to be that warm. So you need to take that stuff out, get rid of it, and start over. Next problem you're going to have is you can see the condensation forming on here where it's just bare skin. I haven't even been in here that long. That was just moisture in the air that condensated on that. Next. Well, I'm just going to use this stuff. Put up sheets of insulation and uh, well I'll do as best I can so like this from the previous owner I didn't do this and there's cracks and gaps here I mean they tried they filled some of them here but you could see the condensation all along the ribs here and this is my favorite part where'd that go let me spin you around here nice and slow 
you could see the condensation forming up underneath here. So even if you think you're sealing this, you're not because it's getting wet and then running down the backside of all that anyway, which is going to rot your bus. It's never going to get out of there, that condensation. And it's not good. So what does that leave us? That leaves us with spray foam. Awesome. Now what this is doing is this is providing a vapor barrier up against the steel. So the coldest surface is right here. But because the foam doesn't get cold, there is no cold surface for moisture to condense on. So that's the key. However, they didn't do enough. And if you look at these ribs, they're wet. So that doesn't work either. So now what, you, well, what are you supposed to do now? What you need to do is you need to have strapping come across this and touch it in just a few spots. And then go again the other way and create like a lattice type pattern. This way you have very few points of thermal bridging to where the outside cold comes through to the inside surface. That's where it all condenses and that's where you're going to get your moisture issues. The same thing is going to happen on your walls. I don't really see it as much here. Not that humid, but it's all hitting the ceiling at the moment. But the walls are the same thing. And if you try to just use fiberglass insulation, it's going to breathe through the fiberglass, hit this metal, and then just condense and drop. Now, when you're building a house, the house is wood. It can breathe. It can handle that. It's supposed to have some airflow through the walls to a degree. With steel, you're not, you, you don't have that. You have a complete opposite effect and a negative effect because the outside is like a giant radiator trying to cool you down. And you don't want to touch the outside at all. Basically, you want to build a cooler that you're inside of. And it doesn't matter really what's going on the outside of a cooler. The temperature is always good inside the cooler. So that's the goal of what you're after. Seal the whole thing as best you can. Short of my windows, I know. Oh, okay, but we'll get to that. That's the point, though. Use spray foam. Put strapping in. Do it right. And don't cheap out on it. Even if you're, oh, I don't need it that bad, this is happening to you every night. Even if you're in, like, Arizona, where it gets real hot during the day, dries it all out, and then at night it's freezing cold, you're breathing in your bus, it's condensing back and forth all day, every single day. Ah, what else do we need to touch on with that subject of the insulation? If you can't afford the insulation, that's where I'm at right now. Let me, let me explain the situation here. I need to get, I'm planning a four inch insulation on the floor. It's like $53 a sheet right now. I have my money allotted for tax bills that are just outrageous at this one point. So I don't really have the money to spend on this. It's just a side project. However, I can't stop production per se. So there's other things I can do, but I need to bring all the junk that's outside back in here. So in order to do that, and in order to hook up my diesel heater, I need to get at least eight feet of flooring done so I have somewhere to work, stack, and move. So, okay, buy these couple sheets, get this going, and then work from there. Then I can, okay, I can put the diesel heater in, I can start strapping the ceiling, I can start wiring the bus, and then maybe, okay, I got a couple bucks, let's buy the next couple sheets, and then keep going. Don't just be like, oh, I don't have the money for it, but I have the flooring, just throw the flooring in and go. You'll regret it later. You gotta take the time to put the money into the insulation. That's the most important part is the insulation. Otherwise, you're, you're selling yourself short for all the work you're gonna do on your bus. And you'll wish you had it later. You always will, especially with costs just climbing every single day. Okay, that's great you have a diesel heater, but it's $5 a gallon for fuel. You wanna run it as little as possible to heat the place. So, reality there. Same with cooling and solar. You know, the, Great, we can do it, but the less it has to run, the more efficient the whole system's gonna be. The less you're replacing parts and batteries and the less you need to rely on the sun being out to get the power. All these little things add up to buy the insulation and do what you gotta do. I mean, I wanna get this whole thing spray foam. Who knows when I'm gonna get around and get that done, but there's a lot of work I can do in the meantime before that. Even building the cabinets and the layout for what I want for the couches and the, that. Get it in. Make it. Well, Swiss cheese is getting a little bit of patchwork. You can see there's the tape and how it's working out compared to all the holes that were there. Pretty slick. Now the plywood I just have laying down there, 
to get an idea of what I'm doing and how the layout's going to go. You could see previous people notched this to fit around the air conditioning stuff. And when you lay it out eight foot from the front, they didn't account for anything in the front of this. They're just flush with this. So I kind of want to have this hang over the front because I want to put some insulation here and then another piece over this of wood of some sort to finish this all off when I'm done in one even plane. So to do that, I have to kick all this forward a little bit, which means just add more to that notch. No big deal. But that's what I'm checking out with the layout of how this is going to go. The next thing I need to do is figure out how I want to do the insulation because I'm going to run the sheets this way for the insulation but two sheets together is going to put me eight foot and I don't want to run right into this seam again so I have a two foot sheet which I could start with and that will kick me over two feet this way which is probably what I'll do with one of the layers now I need to figure out the second layer how do I want to cut that one maybe I'll do a two foot sheet here, then the piece, then a three foot sheet, and then go, and that will kick my stagger even further. So whatever I'm left with to give me a good step and lock in pattern. Then I at least have eight feet in the front that's solid and secure, and I can build off of and go off of from there. So it's a start. I need more tape. Go figure. I thought I had plenty of tape. Burned right through it, but I've been sitting on the tape for a while, so I'm using it for other projects too. But it did work, and it kind of sealed it just as well as I needed. Once the foam is on top of this as well and pushes into that all the time, it's never going to go anywhere. It's kind of absolutely perfect for doing that. That's a Vantec three-quarter inch plywood. I don't know if you call it plywood, particle board, whatever. This is the good stuff you want to use because no matter what, it stays flat. So you know, regular plywood's going to move a little bit more. Even though I love regular plywood, this stuff is good for in your bus. But make sure you insulate that sucker first. Now I remember what I wanted to say with that other part about marking my hole here. So while I have the sheet there, let's keep this nice and easy. If I come under here, you can see right there. I'll just trace that out and I'll be good to go. So get yourself some good PL Premium any kind of good urethane adhesive is going to work pretty well on this stuff. And go to town. Liberal amounts all over the place. Well, I'll obviously glue the floor. Then we're going to glue this again and put more foam on top of it. And then we're going to put some weight on there so it doesn't move. This shouldn't be too bad. It's pretty straight. One of the things you may want to try doing is make sure that you test fit your pieces before you go ahead and glue them because you do have to clear this rib when you're putting your sheet in. So if your piece is too tight, it's not going to clear this number one. And if you have any binding in here, what's going to happen is going to make your sheet want to buckle. So you want to make sure you have plenty of like just enough wiggle room around it. And then you can go around it with a can of spray foam and seal that gap at the end. That's not a problem. But definitely make sure it's not too snug or it will cause more problems with this one if you buckle up. There you go. You don't need a whole lot of this stuff gooped around there. It sticks really well. Now my hole I have marked out, I cut it in the plywood, I cut it an inch and a half bigger all the way around so I can make a blocking going over this and that'll set, I'm going to go right over this with the foam and then put the board and cut what I want later. However, I already have it cut on the board so that's the easy part. Just keep going. So there's two layers down. Let's see how I have my staggered pattern. I started with a two foot sheet and then I was going to do an 18 inch one but I wanted to have some strength in the front here so I'm going to full foot, four foot sheet. Then the 18 inch piece, back to the four foot, and that'll carry my pattern. Give me just enough stagger here. That when I put my eight foot sheet of plywood, it comes to approximately here. Nice. Now, why four inches of foam? I mean, come on, four inches is a lot. You can do two enough. But you're getting an R10 out of each two inches. So there you go, that's about what you're looking at for your values. Now, in normal house construction, a wall is an R19, so if we're only getting an R20 on the floor, well, that's not that much better than what a house wall is. However, a house wall is made of wood, not metal. Metal's cold, so when this metal floor is zero degrees outside, it's zero. When the house is when it's zero outside, wood never really gets much below like 50 degrees. So, 
it kind of works against you to, as a giant radiator, to make it even worse to heat with metal surrounding your whole time structure. So more insulation is better, especially in this case. Now, again, why so much on the floor? I mean, I'm going to have more on the floor here than probably on the ceiling. I'll probably only end up with maybe three inches on the ceiling, Me, hopefully, when I'm done. The more, the better. Heat rises, so wouldn't you want to keep the heat in more with that? Well, yes. However, it's very easy to make heat these days. Let's crank up the diesel heater and you make a little extra heat. So that's not the problem. However, it's very hard to heat your feet. Heat rises, but it's always going to be super cold at the floor. Like, think about it. You have zero degree air blowing underneath your bus, cooling the whole floor down. Your feet are going to be cold the whole time. So if your feet are cold, you're going to be cold. That's kind of uh, the reality of being cold. So keep your feet warm. Or now, here on the flip side of that whole thing, check this out. You're cruising down the highway, the sun comes off, it turns out to be a beautiful day, it's like 75 degrees out, the sun's beaming away. How hot is that pavement that you're cruising down? It's over 100 degrees. So let's say you pull into a parking lot. That parking lot's over 100 degrees. If it's a 90 degree day, forget it. You're 120, 130 degrees just on the pavement. So that blacktop is radiating the heat off as you pull onto it. Where do you think it goes? It goes up, it hits your floor, warms up the metal of your floor, and heats your bus, basically cooks it. Again, by having extra insulation on the floor, you're avoiding that radiant heat coming from parking lots and roadways, just cruising down the highway. You have a lot of heat coming up, even though you're moving. It's still, that all that residual heat off the road has to go somewhere. So, that helps. Also, soundproofing. I mean, it's going to be a whole lot quieter going down the road with some insulation in this thing. So I'm going to lose a little bit of my spacing, you know, to have four inches here and whatever, it shrinks down my headroom, but that's why we did the roof raise, so we still have room. Now I have to glue down and put my plywood on top of this, so it has some weight to it, so let me get on that one. Okay, here we go, about to snap this piece in, and it's so tight, you just have to prop the center, so when we pull this board, shoop, you should set that seam perfectly. <laughs> Oh man, I just came out into the bus this morning, and it rained last night, and the bus is dry. That is awesome. What a feeling of relief there. I was worried, you know, I had some of these windows are very questionable, and uh, now that I'm putting the floor in, I don't want any moisture coming in here. It's working. And you can see, that's how I weighted down my floor. I figure, ah, you know, I have to have all this stuff back in here anyway. It's kind of the layout of what I'm going with. That's sort of, uh, well, we'll put it there for now. But yes, the fact that this is dry, I expect a little water out here in the back. And we really don't even have any back here. This window is open here, and it's still pretty dry back here. Cool. Oh, good, good, good.